There we go. How's it going, everybody? Mr. Holton here. Uh, I'm just going to fix with my thumbnail for a moment, a moment because I haven't really uh, spent any time doing that for some reason. I completely forgot about that. Uh, just a moment, guys. I will get to uh, I will get to the chat in just una momento. I gotta get this fixed though. How you guys doing, by the way? Hey John, how you doing? Nico, Ritz, Jerry, Josh, Rojas, how you guys? How you guys doing? Hope you're all having a wonderful Monday. Uh, we're gonna talk some Mass Effect, of course, because as we do on this channel, whenever it's Monday and we have something to talk about, uh, we're gonna repeat a couple of things, of course, because that is just uh, you know how the business is when it comes to Mass Effect right now. But uh, there is. Uh, a video I wanted to check out. I'm actually going to look at Kala's video or watch Kala's video today. So we're going to do a small, you know, react stream here. <laughs> I've actually been holding off from that video because I've been wanting to check it out on stream. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, we're going to do that in just one moment. Face man, horseman, how you doing? Hey, young man, how goes it? I'm pretty well. Thank you. I just came up from the gym, so I'm pretty... I'm pretty, I'm pretty amped, amped, amped up. Uh, Josh will bang, okay? <laughs> oh, we'll hang. Sorry, I, I should, I shouldn't presume. How you doing, by the way, face man? Waves, waves back, waves back. Hi, hi. Um, let's start this little thing. I'm just gonna check in with you guys first and foremost. Let's have some background music going. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this stream really started off really amateurish, but uh, that's that's how it is, you know, in this business. This business we call YouTube. <laughs> uh, hey, man, just realized you had live, so I watched the theory one. Welcome, Lehel. I, I, that's the thing, you know, YouTube works like that where it's... You never really know when you like any creator is really live unless you check like the profile button whenever you watch their content, which, you know, but I guess, you know, it's it's the solution we have right now. I wish they like YouTube kind of pushed the live streaming world a little bit more, but it seems like they're not going to. So, hey, this is the best we got so far. Phantom, hello there. How you doing? Carly, what's up? Hey, Albert, thanks for all your Mass Effect love, Mr. Hulton. I keep on remembering the last scene with Anderson and ME3 closer than any relationship I've ever had with my parents. Really? You for real, Al Albert? Damn. I mean, that is a pretty, that is a pretty, uh, how to put it? What's a good word for that scene? It's, uh, it's very emotional for sure. Yeah. Like, I could, I could see it. I could see that being a thing, you know, where you feel like, oh man, this connection that I have with Anderson, who is just a character, but it's like, it's greater because you, he sort of like becomes your father figure throughout the trilogy. So I can, I can see what you're saying there. A uh, heart warming. Yes. You said my first name perf. You said my name perfectly. And was your first time. Hey, little kiss. That's the thing. I'm good at pronouncing stuff sometimes. <laughs> sometimes uh been around a bit we'll stay thank you for the 14 months carly appreciate it thank you so much and please do uh because we're just gonna we're just gonna chill out and watch some mass effect stuff now again i've gotten express permission from cal at least we'll see if we can like see uh watch dan's video as well because i haven't seen his andromeda review in 2024 either but i feel like i want to check it out as well I'm going to assume that Dan is okay with it because he's usually okay with it. In case you're not Dan, you just, uh, uh, you know, yell at me over Twitter. 
Um, yeah, it's good old. It's just good old Mass Effect Monday. So we're not playing. Um, we're not playing the, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition right now. I just want to, you know, talk and hang out and theorize and talk and talk and, you know, theorize and theorize and, and talk and talk. <laughs> uh, you're North European, correct? I'm Swedish. I'm from Sweden. <laughs> uh, Shepard Dilemma, what about time travel? It would be too obvious, but maybe it works. Yeah, we've covered uh, time travel before. We've talked about that several times. And uh, here's the thing, right? I see it pop up as an idea every now and then. Like, I'm not entirely against the idea because there are so many ways of writing a time travel story. But it, it there are so many risks treading on time travel because you might end up creating these huge, massive plot holes uh, when you change something in the past or something similar, uh, and then you have to like think about, okay, what happens then at this year if you do this before then? And so, you know, it, it runs the risk of becoming, I don't know, campy, uh, uh, nonsensical. Uh, there are, of course, franchises that have used time travel in a smart way. I'm thinking, obviously, Avengers. <laughs> That's a good way of using time travel, I guess. But then again, like they're using it in a smart way, right? In the uh, Avengers uh, Endgame. So they like travel back and forth in time, but it's like, you know, there are sacrifices when you do that. And then, uh, you know, you just kind of, you know, you've seen the movie, you know, you know, all of you know, right? It's the same thing with, uh, uh, It's another thing, right? Another another movie is like Interstellar, for example, right? Where it's not time travel really per se. It's more like dimensional travel that could work. But then again, the problem here is we've talked about that before. You know, the the closer you get to the speed of light, uh, the uh, slower the world around you. Uh, is perceived. So for everybody else, the, the 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 time goes quicker, but for you, it just, you know, it, it just passes just as it does now. Time is relative, right? But because of element zero in Mass Effect, it removes the time travel uh, sort of aspect or the, the time dilation aspect. So you don't feel it when you go through mass relays and when you travel with your ship because Element Zero specifically states that it removes time dilation. So, <laughs> we can't have that either, which, you know, again, kicks the, the time travel idea to the curb. Uh, Karsten with the 14 months, thank you so much for the support, man. Uh, hey, yo, Kala, hey, you, hey, there you go. We can't start the video without you first. So, uh, now that you're here, we're going to start soon. Slim, by the way, how you doing? More theory? Oh, baby, yes, more theory silencer. That's what we that's what we started with on this channel. My theory, Shepard is coming back. Uh, then we find him in the freezer. <laughs> it's a pretty solid uh, theory. I just, you know, I wish we had some more, you know, it was more fleshed out. I've talked about before, like the frozen Shepard theory. But there are so many scenarios you can go through there. But again, it's like, oh, Captain America... 2.0 sort of again not entirely against the idea it just has to make sense when you write it and it has a chance a huge chance of being very campy um aloha captain bill burkett how you doing hope you're doing well over there in hawaii where which i want to go to at some point in my life phantom wraith question do you hope mass Effect 4 doesn't cannot cannot canonize destroy ending and allows for control ending to exist i do hope so yes my if you want my personal like wants, I want them to be able to create a game that has all three endings, that is destroy, control, synthesis, and we can see the outcomes of every, like that would be amazing, you know, seeing what every ending is or sort of entails. And it's sort of like three different games in one game or three different stories, or maybe like it's the, the general story is the same, but it like it, it has different pathways depending on what Shepard shows, right? 
The problem is that's going to take a lot of effort. It's going to take a lot of money and a lot of time for Bioware to do that. So I'm not realistically expecting it. Uh, the most realistic expectation is like, oh, okay, they're going to settle on one ending and they'll work off of that because that is really the simplest way of doing it. And they're not really, you know, they, they've done that before. So yeah, it wouldn't be like the first time. Andrew Tucker, how you doing? E Crispy, just watch your Shepard Dilemma video. Fun watch as always. I think if Shepard wasn't the protagonist, they wouldn't be toying with us like this. Also, Mystery N7 might not be the protagonist. Yeah, that's possible. We've talked that, about that before. Several other YouTubers have talked about that before. You know, that it might not actually be the protagonist, that it might be the villain. <laughs> <laughs> or something similar. Um, but uh, yeah, so we've, I think me and Kala and even, yeah, I think even me and Dan talked about that. It's, it's an odd situation because they do want to keep us hyped for the next game. They, they they want us to be excited for the next game. And a lot of people's excitement anchors on the idea of Shepard returning. That is like the big question that just returns all the time. It's the, like, it's, it's the number one question I tell you that not only I get asked, but that I just see on like my analytics that I see on Google Trends. Every goddamn time, it's always like, like it's always top end the meter. Is Shepard coming back to the next Mass Effect? So people obviously are very, very against the idea that Shepard does not return. So, and the thing is, you know, they're trying to tease us, but they don't want to give anything away. I get that, but I, I sort of feel like, yeah, they are toying with us a little bit. Uh, and I think they should reveal it, honestly, so we can build off of that already. Because now we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place and we don't really know, like, either way, right? Would be more fun, I guess, for everybody if we just knew and then we could, like, speculate how it how it happens and all that. Um, hey, Rawl, how you doing? Welcome. God damn, it, it, it actually seems to be working. The live thing with YouTube actually seems to be working where you make a video and then you live stream. That's a good idea. Uh, <laughs> reminder to myself. Alexander Johnson, Shepard returns as the main villain. Nah, that's not going to happen. Welcome, Alex, by the way. How you doing? Uh, we fight the old Normandy crew one by one. That would be brutal. No, 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 no. That's not going to happen, dude. Hey, Spectre, how you doing? Destroy synthesis control and... <laughs> fuck off ending <laughs> yeah that's not gonna happen because they would have to make a completely different storyline if that happened because we already see that Liara is returning for the next game and so she would be dead if that would be the case so yeah that's probably not gonna happen would be cool though Imperator Imp Imperator Palpatine welcome to the Ensven squad thank you for the support my Emperor <laughs> Uh, Zach, my bro, how you doing? Welcome. Uh, did you hear about the new Jurassic Park game? No, I have not. Uh, it might be what you called me about, but I'm sorry, I missed your call. Uh, Slim Psycho with the 13 months, appreciate it, mate. Thinking the poster child for these next Mass Effect games will just be a Mast and Seven agent because we'll be creating custom protagonists, maybe. That is the most logical answer, I agree. That would be the most obvious thing to do really um so yeah most likely yeah and we're probably not gonna you know if it's Shepard over or if it's someone else you know I guess that's fine but I would rather they just tell us now uh really hope that the mystery on seven is just a really important character that will heavily influence the plot definitely probably gonna be the case if we look at it just uh logically yes Otherwise, they would like make a big deal out of this character, right? Because they they sort of did. You know, the N7 Day trailer had a human with a Corian last name. Yes, uh, don't remember the name of it though. But yeah, it was like a human and a Corian, so probably they're married or something. Since EA bought Bioware, their games have gone down the toilet. <laughs> Anthem, Inquisition, ME3, MEA. I mean, here's the thing, right? ME3 is a great game. The only part about ME3 that I didn't like was the ending, and I'm still sort of split on it. But the game in general, come on, dude. It was pretty good. My opinion, though. 
you're you're uh, you're uh, you're uh, entitled to your own. So hey. What if indoctrination theory is real? Shepard dies by the hands of Harbinger, as usual, but the combined strength of the entire Milky Way army is enough to destroy the Reapers. No. Bioware also already said, like, that's that's a that's a theory that's way too smart for us. Uh then again, you know, you never know. Maybe Michael Gamble brings it back because, you know, he's the new new boss, so to speak. So who knows? Maybe he brings he, he brings the indoctrination theory. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's outside the realms of possibility just because some of the old staff denied it. Uh, it's, a lot of people seem to like the indoctrination theory. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, uh, it's a pretty interesting theory, and it could have worked, honestly, if, uh, if Bioware decided to implement it because it makes sense. But uh, it would also kind of suck because then you would know that, oh, okay, so Shepard is corrupted at the end, which kind of sucks because that's the whole point. You're not supposed to be corrupted, but Shepard does get corrupted, which would be like a tragic ending still. So, you know, yeah. The biggest problem, again, is not so much the endings themselves. It's the the fact that you don't get any closure. That That's always been my problem. That's always been my like point of con contention is that there's no closure. Uh... Yeah, they probably like the theory as well. Yeah, really true. <laughs> a Jurassic Park game have some good graphics. Uh, okay, I'll check it out later. ME2 is just peak sci-fi in gaming to this point, for sure. Like, I, I mean, you know, all the games have their strengths and uh, weaknesses. Uh, my per personal favorites are definitely Mass Effect 1 and 3. Uh, I love 2, but 1 and 3, they just do it for me. Let's see here. Uh, I gotta, I gotta switch over to Kala's window over here. Let's see what the miss has to say. Here we go. And before I start, I want you guys to remember to bring Kala's window or her video to your own screens. Make sure. You check it out, like it, and comment. Be nice, okay? Lincoln is in the in, is in the chat, so remember to check out check that out. It's very important that we support other creators. I don't want to be uh, one of those uh, parasitic uh, reaction live streamers, <laughs> which is ironic that I say that right now. Uh, Eggman, Topku, I don't agree with the theory, but would be cool if the army we amassed was able to decimate the Reapers. Oh, yeah, that's one thing I wish we saw, like that we actually got a bigger thing with the whole armada. We saw an entire, like, big, huge battle on the planet. We see a space battle, and that's amazing. One of my favorite moments in the trilogy. Uh, but, like, when the fleet arrives, but it could have been more, really. Let's check it out. Oh, my Jesus. Kala and Mr. Olton putting the entire Mass Effect community <laughs> off their back. Don't forget Big Dan, man. He also released a video just a couple of days ago. But when it comes to theories, I wish Dan did more theories, honestly, because uh, he's pretty funny when he does them. Dark energy could be the key to Mass Effect 5. Ooh. So let's break down dark energy, element zero. I'm really looking forward to this because I've made uh, essentially two videos on this already, three maybe. I think I've made like four times, like I've referenced it several times, but I've made two Dark Energy videos. Uh, one is a remake of the other. And I just think it's such an interesting topic and such an interesting idea. And just I just wish they went with that route at some point. See what uh, Kala has to say. The Scourge and the Geth, and every single connection to these in every game. And then go over my theories related to how I think these could be involved in Mass Effect 5. First, here is everything you need to know about dark energy. And dark energy is something that already exists within our real world. Hey, Strom. It's a relatively recent discovery, so there's still a lot that is unknown about dark energy. But it's essentially a form of energy that is responsible for the accelerating expansion of the universe. Dark energy is also the dominant component of the universe, contributing to 68% of the total energy in the present day observable universe. In the Mass Effect universe, dark energy is able to be manipulated by element zero, which is a rare material mined and used for mass relays, faster than light travel, 
and if ingested, can even give a person biotic abilities. So dark energy in the in the Mass Effect universe isn't exactly the same as dark energy uh, that we've observed, like actual dark energy. Uh, but I guess it's like Mass Effect's own interpretation of what dark energy is, because we don't really know. Uh, again, also, I want to mention, I'm not going to pause this video too much uh, like I usually do because it's a long video <laughs> uh, or else we're going to sit here for hours and hours and hours. When Element Zero is subjected to powerful electrical currents, Element Zero releases dark energy that can be harnessed to create mass effect fields. I got to respond to this, though. Slim Psycho, when Dan does a theory video, I imagine him being a parody of you because he never takes it serious. No, I think it's because I'm on his ass to make a theory video. I've actually done that a couple of times. <laughs> so I don't know if I just make him feel forced to do it or just because I enjoy watching it. So I don't know if he does it for me or if he just does it because he also wants to, to cover it. But uh, yeah, I've, I actually actually felt a little bit guilty uh, before about that. Effectively raising or lowering the relative mass of all objects within the fields. For individuals who can use biotics, ESO nodules and natural electrical impulses in their nervous system allow them to generate and wield dark energy biologically. When it comes to Mass Effect fields, Element Zero can increase the mass content of space-time when subjected to an electrical current via dark energy, meaning that with a positive current, mass is created, and with a negative current, mass is decreased. Low Mass Effect fields allow for faster-than-light travel and surface-to-orbit travel. High Mass Effect fields create artificial gravity and push space debris from starships. And something I didn't know was that, of course, using biotics can drain the user, but it actually creates a static electrical charge. Ships have to touch ground to release this charge. Right. And for biotic users, they experience an occasional static shock when touching metal or other people. That is interesting because uh, I think it says in the uh, Mass Effect wiki or in the, um, the encyclopedia in game, that like um, big freighters and like large ships, they have to like discharge around big gas giants. So uh, yeah, it's just interesting to me that she mentioned that there. And in Mass Effect, dark matter shows up in three distinct settings. One in the foundation of Mass Effect itself. It's used by biotics, as I just explained, while also being important in faster than light travel and specifically the mass relays. Mass Effect is part of the basis of the entire series, but Dark Energy has a few distinct story-related threads. And before yep. I go into detail about the Dark Energy connections within the games, I want to go over the current possible Dark Energy teases we've seen so far in all of the release information about Mass Effect 5. See Starting if I missed something. Starting with the 2020 teaser trailer, in this, we hear anomalies found all across space. This audio also happens after the audio of the Reaper. So this line will most likely connect to the next game and is setting up space-related anomalies. Additionally, in the trailer itself, we see what looks like a nebula and a focus on stars. And this shape shown here is highlighted in the middle of the trailer. Do you guys remember that theory video? <laughs> I can't believe I made a video on this thing. Uh, man, I feel so dumb for doing it. But like people were like asking me, like somebody had said that that shape looks like a reaper. And I was like, man, that's true. <laughs> so I made a long video about it. It felt super stupid. Afterwards, of course, I, I was super hyped about it at the at the time. But then I started thinking like, oh man, yeah, that was probably nothing. <laughs> But it does kind of look like a reaper, in all honesty. Uh, and then you start like thinking, okay, what does this mean for the future? Are the reapers returning? Is it something connected to dark energy and the reapers? Uh... <laughs> oh boy. And at the very end, while anomalies all across space is being said, while this does look like space matter, it also looks very similar to the scourge and similar to this unique energy-looking string of particles from the concept art of this very trailer. 
shortly after the trailer was revealed, concept artist Marco Iazzi shared some of the concept art behind the trailer itself. And these seem to have possible dark energy concepts, possible dying stars and other space-related clues. This piece is titled Reaching Twin Star. And the only real, real-life concepts I could find that related to this were these dying stars. They have the same hourglass shape, Nebula. And this is more similar to what ended up actually being in the trailer. Both of these pieces are titled Twin Star. And additionally, we have this piece which seems to show the process of a dying star. Can I just say that those are some amazing art pieces. That is some crazy skill right there. I wish I could draw stuff like that. That is so cool. Or paint. And this piece is titled Glowing Star Explosion. But out of these concept arts, this is the most interesting piece. This piece is titled Approaching Planet and seems to have this red explosion with red tendrils following in its wake. Not only does this seem to be some kind of explosion or source of concentrated energy, it's also approaching this planet, made obvious by the name. These tendrils and the overall anatomy of this red cloud type of anomaly looks very similar to the Scourge. I made a video about these concepts, kind specifically of. these pieces, and the possibility of this being a dying star. And Gamble did like it, so maybe I was onto something. Are you serious? Wait, when did he do that? Maybe you, you, maybe you told me already. But yeah, right, he did. Yes, I remember now. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. There's obviously something going on there since he liked it. He has even like stated himself that he's very careful about what he says because anything takes is taken like either out of context or people start theorizing about it <laughs> or, you know, uh, you know, it, it's just whatever he says, it, he can't really like he has to be very careful with what he does. So liking this, uh, I think could mean that, yes, yeah, probably something. Additionally, this 2021 Mass Effect Will Continue poster also looks like it has element zero within this crater. Yes. And this crater looks like it was created by a massive impact and has dead Gath bodies surrounding the destruction. And I've seen some say that there is dead Quarians here. And I see the shape of one, but the size doesn't make sense in comparison to the Gath. So there's two, Kala. There's two. Don't you dare say some people. That's me. There are two. I can probably uncircle them and send them to you. There there are two. Trust me. There are two. They're really hard to see, but there are two. <laughs> Though I don't think this is actually a Corian. To me, this only looks like Geth in the rubble. Either way, this blue in the middle definitely looks like Element I'll Zero. I'll show you. And lastly, the Citadel poster released in 2021 looks like it has the Element Zero icon in the middle of the Presidium. I'll do this. This image looks almost exactly like the image on the Wikipedia and what we see in game. And it also has that bright flare we've seen associated with element zero. So there are the possible clues we've been shown. With that, let's go over the dark energy story threads that could continue in Mass Effect 5. In Mass Effect 2, we know at the time that lead writer Drew Karpishin and the writing team was setting up the dark energy as a possible main story thread that would continue into Mass Effect 3's ending. Yeah. This was never fleshed out and was ultimately not the direction that was taken, but the dark energy plot thread was never continued. So we never get a conclusion to the actual story. And if you're unfamiliar with this dark energy concept, in short summary, dark energy was something only organics could access and reapers were wiping out organics because they would use biotics and dark energy to the point that it was essentially pushing the universe closer and closer to the big crunch, opposite of the big bang. Wanting to survive, the reapers were trying to stop this. And the only way to stop this was by using biotics, which meant the reapers had to rely on humans to be able to do this. It essentially reframes the reapers motivations as selfish, but still for the better of the galaxy. So ultimately, I don't think this is important considering they didn't go this route and the actual in-game story is more important. And But the ingredients are there though. 
I can agree, however, like with uh, with Drew's point of view, where it's like, you know, it was just a bunch of techno babble magic reasons. And so they hadn't really solidified the uh, like the, the idea itself. Uh, but I do think that they were on to something there. It could have been really cool. I've seen people talk about how like the the dark energy problem would be too big for the general consumer to really grasp. But then again, like I feel like I think people could grasp that as an issue. The problem is saying that, oh, okay, dark energy is the true enemy or dark energy is the true enemy. Like, how do you fight that? That's not a face you can fight. That's not a being you can destroy. It's just a natural phenomena. It's like, oh, we are going to fight a hurricane. How do you do that? You can't. <laughs> so, or fight it with a bigger hurricane, you know. Oh, yes, dark energy is destroying the universe. How do we fight it? Oh, let's just use more biotics. <laughs> so, how do you do that, right? And so, the entire Reaper plotline with the AI versus... Uh, or organics versus synthetics. It's more like of a problem that you can actually sort of solve, maybe not entirely, but it's more likely, right? Uh, they have to follow up with dark energy, in my opinion. I don't think it's that hard to understand. No, it's it's really not. I think a lot of people would, would grasp it, but I think it could only like really work if you have someone who's accelerating the problem. Not really that the problem accelerates itself, like the dark energy is just, you know, going out of control but that there is some presence behind it and that we have to destroy this presence, sort of. I think that could work. And could be the perfect way to connect the trilogy to Mass Effect 5. In Mass Effect 2, we meet Tally on the planet Haystrom during her recruitment mission. We learn that she went there to get a sample from the planet to get a timeline of the rate of radiation increase. But her equipment wasn't working properly due to the sun's radiation. Haystrom star Dolan was aging faster than normal and turning into a red giant. As Dolan was rapidly maturing, the system experienced magnetic eruptions and an increased solar output. Dolan was destabilizing rapidly for unknown reasons, which Tally says didn't make sense because when it was a Corian colony, it was a normal star. While we don't know exactly how long Dolan was destabilizing, we know that the Morning War began in 1895, and this means the star had to have begun destabilizing sometime after the Geth took over Haystrom in 1896. And there's a little bit of conflicting information mm. here, as Tally says that when Haystrom was a Quarian colony, Dolan was a normal star. But the Codex says that the Quarians colonized Haystrom specifically to study its destabilizing star. But I'm going to choose Tally's in-game story over the Codex as canon. Either way, it was taken over by the Geth at the beginning of the Morning War. And it was shortly after this that communication from the planet and surrounding space stations stopped completely. And what's odd about this planet and star is that the Geth didn't seem to view the sun's activity as a threat. They maintained their presence on the planet and even continued establishing several space stations near Haystrom. Even still, Dolan's magnetic eruptions and solar output still overwhelm most communications near it. So it's unsure how the Geth were able to continue their own activity on the planet. Through Tally's research, we know that the Koreans suspected dark energy to be the cause of Dolan's rapid aging. Mm -hmm. Tally says that she suspects dark energy was affecting the interior of Dolan which would cause a similar effect as a star blowing off mass to enter a red giant phase. But Haystrom's star was too young for this to be a natural cause, and it seems like she suspected an artificial accelerant behind Dolan's destabilization. There we go. That is that is really, you know, they were already on the um like on the precipice of making it like a, a thing that could really work. And as I mentioned, like there has to be like a presence behind it. And here we like see that there is, there seems to be a presence behind it, but we never find out what that is. I'm wondering if they were trying to build it out to be like possibly the Reapers or some other faction or another species or something similar, or maybe it was just, you know, all the races using biotics. Uh, still, it like it would, 
it would make more sense if it was like something that we can actually fight against again, like a villain who's behind this, who has some reason for doing this. Uh, Dark Energy would interest old players while also encouraging new players to play Mass Effect Legendary Edition. It has enough incentive. Yeah, for sure. It is also one of those like big storylines that people just really like, you know, when it's like universal problems that are so huge that you have to find some way to fight, I guess. Uh, it's an epic storyline, I guess. But then again, there are people who want a smaller storyline that's more like, oh, okay, we're we're dealing with galactic civil war or we're dealing with like peacekeeping stuff and things like that, uh, which could also work. Uh, gotta love when an in-game co codex and dialogue conflicts. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. But yeah, I mean, it's it happens. It's a work of art that's this, that's just going to happen. There are so many people that worked on these games and that work on video games, so that just tends to happen. Uh, Andromeda has dark energy and element zero plot lines. It feel like they were trying to connect to original trilogy. The Angara and the Remnant and the Jardon all used it. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Arlie, that uh, there could definitely be some... Uh, like, it just makes sense if you connect to the... Um, uh, the Scourge with dark energy because we've all seen it like being accelerated to destroy things and we can actually see it destroying things in real time in the games so yeah uh, is it a good thing or bad thing that bioware has been a little quiet about mass effect these past few months what do you think guys think here's the thing right uh after n7a 2023 uh bioware actually catched uh, or caught a lot of flack for teasing um uh, and, uh, you know, I get that people are kind of sick of these small teases, but me as a content creator, I just love it. I just love talking about it. I just wish that we could get some more things that were substantial or maybe get some more information about the game. But then again, it might be too early to do anything. Um, but yeah, like, I don't think it's, I think they're just keeping quiet right now up until N7 day, because they were keeping quiet just like this last year again. <laughs> so during these periods between every and seven day, I think they're just going to keep quiet until they come up with something cool to show us. And I think that's going to probably continue until the game releases. And I guess I'm fine with that. Uh, but I have a feeling like they've been extra quiet now because they caught some flack from people. So yeah. I hope they don't just keep silent on N7 Day. That would suck because it's fun to talk about. It's fun to cover. Um, I think at this point we need to know at least who the next protagonist is. Yes, I agree, Atten. Absolutely. Aside from the sun's impending doom, there was a lot of Geth activity on Haystrom. Spy probe scans indicate extensive orbital construction around Haystrom, housing thousands of Geth platforms and an Bear, unknown doing? number Welcome. of Geth software. It is not known how many Geth are on Haystrom since the radiation interfered with scans. And based on scans and based on the Geth's mining, refining, and fabricating activity on the planet, estimates suggest that Haystrom has roughly 20 more years of use before all of its resources are exhausted. And Tally was sent here by the Korean Admiralty Board. So this was causing enough of a concern that even Korean leadership wanted it to be investigated. That's what I find so fascinating. So much so to the point that they were even willing to risk the lives of all the Koreans that ended up dying on Haystrom. Additionally, in Mass Effect 2, we also meet Gianna Parasini right. again. And this time she's on Ilium. She tells us she is doing research due to recent hacking. And she wants to make sure they are external. She says a lot of people are suddenly interested in dark energy and her bosses want to know if it's something to worry about. So it seems there was both an increase of people interested in dark energy to the point that there were several incidents of hacking to get information about dark energy. So Mass Effect 2 set up dark energy in more than one way. Yeah. Not only connecting to the larger Mass Effect universe, but also the Geth, which we know are returning. Haystrom was not only dealing with the death of its star Dolan, but despite everyone else struggling to use technology near the planet because of this radiation, we know that the Geth were unbothered by the radiation and that whatever technology they had was able to be used despite the radiation and interference from Dolan dying. 
They also made this planet a sort of super hub, storing thousands of Geth units on the planet. And while we see Corian architecture during Tali's mission, the Geth were building all around the planet and were continuing to build space stations. And for what reason, we have no idea. We have no idea why there were thousands of Geth units here or why this planet was chosen as a hub for the Geth. They were probably studying Nor it as well. Nor do we know how they were able to circumvent the radiation effects. We also know that Tally suspected that the cause of Dolan's destabilization was not natural and that there could have been an artificial reason behind it. And like I said, there's a little bit of a contradiction of the timeline, but based on what Tally said, it seems that Dolan started destabilizing after the Geth arrived. And we know that it was shortly after they seized the planet that communication was cut off. So hmm. there's a ton of possibilities here. This specific story thread connects the dark energy, the Geth, the Corians, and possible strange technology that we know the Geth already had access to with their construction of the Geth telescope. I wonder, was it maybe like the cool thing is you can uh, you can imagine that maybe they you they were like harvesting uh, the star or the resources to build the Geth telescope or well use energy to in some way like construct it because I know that it's like several mass relays that have been put together and that's how they create like a big telescope that it can use to like look far away like into the Andromeda galaxy. Maybe they were like harvesting en energy from it somehow and uh, the Geth were like accelerating their evolution. That would make a lot of sense. Very much a lot of sense. Uh, I can't imagine a Mass Effect without Anderson. Hopefully they get Keith David to make a cameo. Yeah, I would love that as well. But how exactly? Considering he unfortunately, you know, not Keith David, but uh, but Anderson passed away. <laughs> So, you know, that would be hard to do. Maybe like a recorded message could be cool for sure. And I'll get more into that later. But aside from the story thread on Haystrom, Gianna Parasini's story thread was setting up a greater connection to prominent figures in the galaxy. And those prominent figures were desperately trying to get information on dark energy. And these were not the only two mentions of dark energy in Mass Effect 2. Another dark energy story thread set up in Mass Effect 2 in the Arrival DLC was around the mysterious object Ro, right. found in the Bahawk system. During Arrival, Dr. Kenson tells us that she learns about the invasion from a device called Object Ro. Object Ro is a Reaper artifact discovered among the asteroids around the relay itself. We don't know why there is a Reaper artifact in an asteroid, and she goes on to say that Object Row still contains powers and gave her visions of the Reaper invasions. Essentially, Object Row was using vast amounts of dark energy to maintain itself and to maintain the barriers protecting it so that it can continue broadcasting its Reaper signals. And that is partly what's causing the dark energy sort of acceleration, the dark energy problem, because you could assume that the Reapers use technology that is super powerful, but it also uses a lot of energy. And so, you know, while they're trying to find a solution, they're also kind of speeding up the problem. But that's also kind of where like the storyline really like, you know, collides because it's like, oh, they don't really make sense anymore because they're trying to stop something, but they are all, they're also accelerating the problem. But then again, it's a universal problem because element zero is a universal thing that gets used when any species like, you know, manages to become a, a space faring species, they start using element zero. And so they speed up the process again. And so it's this strange, you know, unfortunate loop. Um, yo, Hung, what's, what's up, man? How you doing? Welcome. Uh... Arrival DLC, yeah, unlike other things, I don't think it will be relevant at all. Eh, you know, maybe not Arrival, but uh, we see signs of it still. And while the events of Arrival are a little bit convoluted lore-wise, especially considering our main source of information, Dr. Kenson did become indoctrinated, we do learn that the Alpha Relay, the oldest known mass relay in the galaxy, can make use of hidden dark energy reserves. When the relay's controls are adjusted, the relay can tap into an unprecedented amount of dark energy. 
And there we go. That is the problem, right? Whenever Reaper thinks, or Reaper, uh, uh, but technology uses uh the, the, like uses energy they just use insane amounts of energy energy like uh thousands of times what a a normal biotic maybe does uh hung with the five gifted thank you so much appreciate it my man my man <laughs> i just suddenly became jamaican uh okay we gotta we gotta add you up here thank you hung double using the chat for hung just gonna add you onto my chest right here get a honorable spot <laughs> gotta make myself a little better sorry Kella. just so it covers there we go slim with the five bucks <clears throat> how you said how because unfortunately i thought keith died for a second i almost cried sorry slim no 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 uh, i should have so <laughs> said uh anderson died <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> Dramatically extending its range to six. Wait, what? Keith wants to be in the rumored live action show? Really? Fuck yeah. Please. That has to happen. Bioware, make it happen. Teen other mass relays and even the Citadel. What Object Row actually was is uncertain, but it appears to be another Reaper artifact indoctrination device that was going to great lengths with dark energy to protect itself. And obviously, Object Row was destroyed in the end, but this still opens up additional possibilities around dark energy. Not Harbinger. only are we seeing it related to Reaper artifacts, most likely made for indoctrination, but we also learned that the Alpha Relay was unique and could connect to 16 other relays and even the Citadel. And while the Alpha Relay was also destroyed, it still opens up possibilities that other older relays could also have this capability, maybe even after the Reapers were destroyed. Additionally, we learned that Dark Energy was able to be used as a sort of force field, which we haven't seen used like this before. Unfortunately, none of these plot threads were continued in Mass Effect 3. No. We don't see Gianna Parasini again. We don't learn what happened to Haystrom. We don't, do we? Gianna just disappears. Don't they say that she dies during the Reaper War? You just hear that she dies off screen. Or Dolan, and we <clears> don't <throat> find out what happened to the Geth on Haystrom. And then we don't see any of the dropped energy dark threads for Mass Effect 3's ending. But this means that these threads are still open and possibilities are endless, considering there are no finalities on any of these stories. They can continue. And I think they will and should. Not only because they introduce an interesting concept, but also because they could help tie in Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 with Andromeda. There we go. Which we know is happening in some capacity. So with all the dark energy connections from the original trilogy explained, let's break down the Scourge, which I think would be the best way to connect all the games. And as a reminder, the Scourge isn't 100% defined yet which leaves a lot of room for the writers to mold it to fit whatever they need it to fit, which is why I think it could True. be relevant to Mass Effect 5. But timeline-wise, from what we apparently know, there we the go. Scourge was created when it was detonated on key to Sira around 2450, which would be almost 300 years after the events of Mass Effect 3. So if we do get a jump in the timeline to Andromeda's 2819, then the Scourge would still be around. But if this next game takes place closer to the Reaper War, then from what we kind of know, the Scourge wouldn't be around just yet. But again, there are several ways they could write this, which I'll get into my theories later, but let's look at what the Scourge is actually speculated to be. So my guess here before Kala says it, I'm just gonna assume that the Scourge, as far as I remember, I'm trying to remember here, but essentially the scourge is just weaponized dark energy so really you could almost like assume that it's a different version uh, of um element zero or something you know like it's it's just a reverse sort of thing like it's just charged differently i don't know how they would write that but it's just a different version essentially and they can weaponize it i think that is what it is really sort of like how you make a nuclear bomb 
you have to split the nucleus and then you get a big chain reaction. I think that's what the scourge really is here is that it just has this whenever you affect the dark energy in some way, it turns into the scourge. And that could essentially be like just because we know that um, Mass Effect's version of dark energy or element zero is essentially really just space magic, really. <laughs> So what they could do is really just make it a, an alternate version of dark energy because it's still just make-believe, right? It's not that really that hard to believe, right? 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 Uh, how crazy would it be that the Reapers use dark energy as the source of indoctrination? Uh, they most likely do because everything that uses technology in Mass Effect uses uh, dark energy or uses element zero in some way. I don't think we will ever ha ha know what happened uh, to Gianna. Emily Wong dies off screen, but I don't think anything about Gianna. Oh, that's Emily Wong, right. Yes, it's not Gianna. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened to Gianna. I guess I just forgot about her, but would have liked to met her again in three. They can write it, however, since there's no finality on any of these threads. True. In Andromeda, Hashtag it is space heavily magic? speculated yes. that the Scourge is composed of dark energy. And it is speculated that the Scourge is also of artificial or- I kind of like Cal as writer, really. It's really the only female writer where I felt like, yeah, yeah, she looks pretty good. Like whenever I look at the, <laughs> the standard writer or other writers, I just, you know, they, they, they all look pretty eh. Uh, but this one, I think you got, you did a good job there. Origin. And while there's mostly speculation around the Scourge, it is confirmed to have element zero within it. But even though the Scourge is suspected to be made of dark energy, it does not behave in the way that existing theories work with dark energy. And everything around right. the Scourge is still very much up for speculation and debate. While scientists in Andromeda were studying it, it was a new phenomenon that hadn't been seen before. And they had only been studying it for less than two years. And while the Scourge is heavily connected to the Angara, even to them it was largely a mystery. Some scientists believe that the Scourge is a dark energy phenomenon in the literal sense, meaning a form of energy that has no electromagnetic interaction and thus cannot be detected, hence the term dark, which is different from dark energy which is actually tangible. According to the Codex, the Scourge is a term used to describe the huge and extremely dangerous phenomenon that has spread across the Helios Cluster. It spreads in tendrils appearing to be some kind of expanding cloud, and this cloud affects everything within its surroundings, destroying starships that attempt to pass through or near it. Observations and data from the Nexus show that these Scourge tendrils are radioactive element zero rich dust and debris. Within the tendrils, Thousands of microscopic and unstable warps in space-time are constantly erupting. These distortions build up a charge in the ESO, causing uncontrolled mass effects that alter gravity. The presence of the Scourge also affects nearby planets, raining down radioactive fallout and debris, and even altering the orbits of the worlds that pass through or near it. Sounds pretty similar to this concept art. The Scourge is also aggressively drawn to remnant structures on planets, though the cause of the attraction is unknown. This manifests as further tendrils of dust and radioactive particulates that cling to the surface of the remnant technology and interfere with its operations. I that is the biggest question I have about the Scourge is why is it drawn to remnant stuff? That is one thing that I really want to know the answer to. Because if we assume that it's like just element zero or dark energy, but it's like a reverse version of it or like an unstable uh, dark energy, then, you know, that should just be a, un a universal force. Why is it drawn to technology that is like remnant technology? Unless it's like it's sort of like what uh, magnetism is all about. You know, it's drawn because... It just, you know, it's the polar opposite. So it's, it's like magnets. <laughs> yeah, science. <laughs> it's space magic. What, 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 what should you say, really? You know, what can you say? I think it was a weapon made to stop the Jardon's progression. Yeah, uh, yeah, it seems to be that, 
yeah. But the thing is, like, how does it work, really? You know, of course, it's space magic, but I'm still curious. How, how does it really work? Either this matter was left behind after the planet in question passed through the Scourge itself, or even distant interactions with remnant technology can cause the Scourge to coalesce spontaneously. And there was no long-range data that showed any sign of the Scourge before the initiative departed the Milky Way galaxy, meaning when the Andromeda Initiative used the Geth telescope to observe the Helios cluster, it was Scourge-free. And the Codex says that the Scourge is the fallout of a weapon detonated at Key to Sira. Dr. Eridana believes the weapon caused an instantaneous cluster-wide warping of space-time, briefly connecting multiple points in the Helios cluster at once. Her model suggests that the warp effect annihilated multiple planets, forming the Damn. debris in the Scourge's tendrils, while the resulting radiation converted much of that debris into element zero. The space-time warping effect continues on a micro scale within the Scourge today. So essentially, the Scourge itself is defying science and is constantly warping space and time. Dr. Eridana even says they've barely scratched the surface on the Scourge. And while the contents of the Scourge are still a mystery, the most interesting part of the Scourge is how it was spread. The detonation itself was able to spread across the entire Helios cluster in a way that the detonation opened up various points by bending space-time to have access to several locations at once. And at a microscopic scale, the tendrils themselves are constantly erupting, causing unstable warps in space-time. That means that if the Scourge was artificially created, someone had access to technology that would help in the spread of the Scourge, and that technology was able to connect multiple locations at once by warping time and space. Damn, This in true. itself is extremely interesting, but it also tells us that if the Scourge was intentionally created, this technology existed 300 years after Mass Effect 3. And again, Andromeda scientists aren't 100% sure that the Scourge is dark energy, because it doesn't behave the way that existing theories surrounding dark energy explain its behavior. The hmm. only confirmed materials of the Scourge are ice, mineral debris, element zero, and unknown materials. And while it doesn't exactly behave like dark energy, its behavior shows that it seems to be drawn to technology, especially remnant technology. And it also seems to be drawn to black holes. And element zero forms in the aftermath of a supernova when solid matter, such as a planet, is affected by the energy of a dying star and exploding. And we know that the Scourge is attracted to black holes because the Helios cluster has a black hole that we know was interacting with the Scourge just like this. H012, known as the Ketos black hole, is at the center of the Helios cluster. And there is evidence that some of the Scourge's mass is being drawn into the black hole, causing currents in the phenomenon. Additionally, this black hole is unique and is a Kerr black hole that absorbed additional mass from the nearby systems. Andromeda scientists have suggested that without the black hole, the Scourge phenomenon might have been even more hazardous. And we know that element zero is far more common in the Helios cluster rather than the Milky Way galaxy. And that is speculated to be largely from this black hole releasing radiation, which then turns into element zero. And Atharia explained it much better than I did regarding Ooh. the black hole connection. So go check out her video. But essentially, everything is connected. I love how everybody's doing dark energy videos now. <laughs> it's just such an interesting concept and a theory that I think it just kind of fits like a glove in like the just in Mass Effect overall. It just is a cool plot line that they can do so much with, really. And uh, I just wish that we had seen more stuff about this rather than focusing too much on the whole synthetic versus organic thing. Because as much as I, you know, I respect their decision to continue with that plot thread, I, 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 I would have wanted them to continue with this instead because I just found it more interesting, uh, more mysterious, I guess, in a way. Uh, dark energy is the key. <laughs> yeah. Dark energy is attracted to technology, which uses mass relays, which use element zero. 
and the scourge which contains element zero and suspected dark energy is attracted to remnant technology, which is also known to be comprised of element zero. And the scourge is attracted to the element zero within black holes, which then creates more element zero and also affects the scourge activity. And while I don't want this, this black hole itself seems like it could open up different aspects of time travel, especially since it's theorized that a parent black hole and a daughter black hole can connect via wormhole. And there is a black hole in both the Andromeda galaxy and the Milky Way galaxy. Rose so yes, and bridge ultimately, theory. if they want to, they could go this route. I don't really mm. think I'd enjoy it, but it is possible. Interstellar, sort of. <laughs> I mean, they could do it. We're obviously going to see a version of that in Exodus, you know, the upcoming Exodus game that's also written by Drew Karpishin, you know, the guy who uh, who essentially came up with this idea, I think. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> it could still work. It could. Uh, Elias, how you doing, man? Welcome. Is it me or do we end up with a new dark energy theory every two or three years? I mean, I think it's basically like sort of the same. It's just we we talk about it uh, every every year, I think. That's essentially like the content creator creation cycle. You, you know, you sort of repeat things that you've done before because at some point you start running out of ideas. And that's why a lot of YouTubers do repeat things. It's just, you know, I, I just think... Um, when it comes to Mass Effect, it has so many different ideas that I think are worth discussing. And I think it's just fun to watch. Despite me being a content creator myself that talks about Mass Effect, I still think it's fun to watch other creators talk about it because, I don't know, it just makes me feel good seeing other people talk about something that I agree is a cool thing. Uh, are you going to continue to revisit uh, Mass Effect 1? Of course. They can do instantaneous travel or time jumps or time travel. And this opens up a ton of questions regarding the timeline, especially if you have people jumping between the galaxies. But this time jump and time travel theory are my least favorite theory. It feels a little bit boring and more Marvel-esque than I'd expect from yep. Mass Effect. And with everything I just explained, the potential for a connection between Dark Energy, Element Zero, and the Scourge has already been established. God, what a beautiful picture. All of picture. these three elements are all involved in time and space warping and direct travel. And all of them connect to element zero as well. I truly do think that there are a million possibilities, story-wise, since everything about the dark energy, the Scourge, the Jardan, and the Geth are so open-ended that there aren't many constraints when it comes to forming new stories around the existing lore. And involving all of this, there is an even bigger mystery than what is the Scourge. And that's where did the Scourge come from? As True. of right now, the current information that is known about the Scourge is that it was supposedly released into the Helios Cluster around 2450 after a powerful weapon was detonated on Key to Sira during some kind of conflict between the Jardan and an unknown race. Nuclear weapon. Scans tell us sort of. that the Jeln was teaching moves to whatever opposition the Jardan were facing. In one of the scans on Meridian, you learn that there was a race or individual known as Jeln. The data, which is translated from remnant language, says opposition's next moves learn from secrets from Jeln. Take action, protect the work. Individual life is nothing. The machine of life is everything. So the Jardan were warring with some unknown race, and a weapon and possible artificially made scourge was intentionally spread throughout the entire Helios Cluster due to whatever was going on with this war. So it seems like the Jardan were in control of the Helios Cluster, there was some kind of major conflict going on, and then roughly 300 years before the initiative even arrived, the scourge is detonated because of this war. And I'll get more into the Jardan, the Jeln, the Remnant, and their AI connections in my next video, so I'm mostly going to focus on the origin of the Scourge here. But the Jeln is... are probably the Ket, I'm assuming here, but like maybe the Ket Empire, like the true Ket Empire, because the ones we see with like, uh, what's his name? I don't remember his name, it's so forgettable. But the bad guy in Andromeda, 
like his little squad of cats, they are not the cat's empire. They're, they're just a small little branch that they sent out to the Helios cluster. So I'm thinking it's got to be like the cat's main empire or something like that that did this or somebody else. You write to the Archon, <laughs> whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> Jeln or who are the Jeln? Hey, Yori. And does this point to the scourge and detonation of the weapon being intentional? There are interesting th stories about time travel, but they are really hard and trying to make them work is hard. Yes, Elias. That like it's they also end up feeling so uh disconnected a lot of the time. Like there as I mentioned before earlier in the stream, there are examples of good time travel stories, but like they're very few and far between. As maybe a, as a way to protect the work. <laughs> And was the Jardan taking action? Did they release the Scourge to deter something from being in the Helios Cluster? Was it some kind of last Hail Mary to save both themselves and the Angara and Helios Cluster that they worked so hard to foster and grow? Or Wait was a moment. Scourge uh, Arlie, you heard of snapshot theory that you can travel from one place to another de-atomifying something and then rebuilding it at another point. It uses quantum seeing it doesn't exist till observe. Till observed. Okay, so uh, isn't that like how Star Trek works when you uh, when you like beam people up and down? Aren't you essentially like reconstructing people? The problem is, aren't you killing them by doing that and then reassembling them? So are they even like the same person when you do that anymore? Hmm. An accident. Was it made specifically to target the Jardan's remnant technology by a Jardan adversary? Just Was like Star it Trek released knowing it would negatively affect the Angara? Was it intentionally released to stop the progression of the Helios Cluster? And was it released to stop the Jardan's work involving their Angara templates? There's so many mysteries around the actual origins and histories behind the Scourge that this is another aspect that could be expanded upon in the next game. I'm really and curious as to who created while this it. This is all extremely fun to speculate about. Mary Demarl and the Mass Effect team are far more imaginative than me and will definitely come. Don't sell yourself short there, Kala. That's the thing. I usually do that as well. But as much as like I think that, yes, they are most likely excellent writers. We know that Mary DeMarle is and uh, Chris Tucker. But let's let's not sell ourselves short here, right? Because both you and me and other creators have come up with some pretty good theories. And, uh, you know, there. I think it's not too unreasonable to expect at least some of the things that we've already talked about to at least be not referenced, but maybe partly be true. Maybe because we keep throwing shit at the board and just hope it sticks. But, you know, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I think when it comes to like theories, you kind of have to be imaginative in some way. So even if I like to shoot myself down all the time, I do still think that I'm not completely worthless. Yes, I know there are people out there that think I'm a complete hack and fuck you, by the way. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, I think that everybody has the potential to write good stories. Uh, and I don't think that you should completely sell yourself short there, even if I do think that, yes, Mary DeMarle and the team are experts. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that your ideas are worthless. Uh, if this game happens in the future and after MA3, does this mean all human companions are dead? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, that would mean that, unless they do this quantum stuff, right? Um, <laughs> everyone can write good stories except the Madame Web writers. Oh, Jesus, I haven't seen that one yet. Who has oh, ha, ha. come up with something more oh creative God. and Goodness. innovative? But still, here is how I think Dark Energy, The Scourge, Element Zero, how you doing, Chappie? Conrad Verner, Happy, Chappie. and Dying Stars could tie into the next game. First, with The Scourge, Fleekazoid fan. We know from the timeline Who? that The Scourge was apparently detonated in 2450, which is in the middle of both known games' timelines. But I wonder if the space anomalies that are being spoken of in the trailer could tie into Mass Effect 3's ending. 
We never truly learn the aftermath of what happens after Shepard's decision, nor do we see if there's any domino effects on the technology and galaxy as a whole. The ending is still very much a mystery. But what if the relays exploding or the crucible being activated set off some kind of ripple effect on the galaxy? I can Especially imagine that. since the dark energy crucible itself releases massive amounts of dark energy when it's fired. Yeah. With the crucible being a mystery and involving dark energy, it opens possibilities around the actual implementation of the choices and the aftermath. You want to know what's crazy? You have this big thing that you're constructing, the Crucible, right, Lou? It's the biggest project ever in the galaxy, in the history of the galaxy. <laughs> and the, they make the fucking thing work. They don't know how it works. They just put the things together and they're like, yep, this is how it works. Don't you have to have like a basic understanding of how an actual car works when you put it together? <laughs> or, or is it like Ikea where you just pull up a fucking manual and you go, ah, yes, the, the wheel goes here, wheelhouse goes there, uh, the lever goes there, gas pedal goes here, uh, oil, I don't know, let's use this. <laughs> it's, so, it's so, yeah, it's the Bob the Builder, but it's like Ikea, really. It's, uh, it's just insane to think about that they did that. I don't know, like, if... Is this like a plausible thing that you can just hand somebody blueprints to like the most highly technological thing ever and they don't even need to understand it? <laughs> Everything I just explained about the dark energy, element zero, and time space also applies to the crucible itself. And as we know, Mass Effect 3's ending is mostly unexplored. We get a few slides, but don't really know much of what happened afterwards. Maybe this opened wormholes because of the dark energy. Maybe it created another scourge. Maybe it created the scourge. Maybe it created black holes. I hope they expand upon this ending because it's largely a mystery as to how it actually works and how its blast and explosion had lasting effects on the galaxy. And it makes me wonder if there was more to just the choices given by the star child. Maybe it changed the galaxy as a whole. If synthetic is chosen, it would make sense things would be more affected because of the organics and synthetics merging. But in the Destroy ending, Hackett says everything can be rebuilt, but maybe it took years for them to discover anomalies. Or maybe Haystrom finally did die, and that resulted in some kind of dark energy surge or another possible black hole. At the time of Haystrom's destabilization, the Geth were in control of the Far Rim, not only were they monitoring the activity of Haystrom, but they also housed several of their Geth units there. Maybe after the end of Mass Effect 3, Shepard's choice determines what the Geth did with Haystrom and if it even survives the ending choice. Uh, everyone knows to make uh, technology work, you just hit it hard enough enough times until it's something comes, <laughs> comes off. I mean like, uh, yeah, smashing a TV until it uh, starts. Uh, I wish I could have made a Mass Effect or have Mass Effect 2, the same exact writers, give me another Mass Effect story. Unfortunately, well, there are still people. No, are there even people still there from the writing team? I mean, after Mac Walters left, how many are there really um, on the writing team? That basically that's how tech espionage is. Get the how and reverse it engineer it. Yeah, but still, like it's it's an incredible suspension of disbelief to think that they can build like this big Deus Ex type weapon or you know, a Deus Ex machina really, and have no understanding of it whatsoever. Patrick Weeks, right? Sorry, of course. Yes, he's still there. But there aren't many. While I've said a million times, there's a ton of ways that the Geth could survive the Destroy ending. What if they didn't and were then later reactivated? The Koreans did house Geths in their suits. And especially if you establish peace hey, yo, between Odin. them, they would be more inclined to help the Geth. They could have easily reactivated them and then put their minds into Geth bodies and they could essentially rebuild them. It would almost be poetic. Maybe the Angara found the Geth, or maybe the Jardan found them. 
and help them rebuild, since I think the Jardan could have experience with synthetics. What if the Geth were using the Geth telescope to look into space there it and is. find these anomalies and knew about them before anybody else? What if the strange technology in the technology that the Geth were using to circumvent the radiation from Dolan was more dark energy technology? What if it had protective dark energy barriers just like Object Row? What if their strange technology was also from an undiscovered species or even the Jardan? They were monitoring something and they had access to unknown strange technology. And while from what we know of the current Geth telescope's findings, it was only being used as a telescope, but it was a real-time telescope. Again. What if they were... <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I just find it funny how they like put three, like three mass relays. They just hauled ass and pulled three mass relays and went like, yes, this is now a telescope. Of course, they have some big other thing like technology at the front. It's still, though, it's like, oh, OK, is that what you're <laughs> kind of goofy? But like if it works, uh, then I guess it works. Um, most of the technology we build in, in real life, we have no idea how it works. Well, depending, I mean, you wouldn't ask an electrician to put like something together if he didn't know how electricity works, right? Uh, maybe a bad example, but like just an, as an example, right? Maybe, uh, yeah, sure, you know, if you're just a, a regular small time mechanic, maybe you know how to change oil and you know how to do this and that, but you don't really know how like vacuum works. You don't know how like how a pump works when it like, uh, like sucks in diesel, stuff like that, you know. I, I could understand that, but when it comes to like more technical things, it's like, huh, hmm, hmm, really? Gets DIY project, yes. <laughs> they got a little lazy or just incredibly smart because that's what they are. They were using the telescope to monitor dark energy or found early traces of the scourge or a similar dangerous material connected to anomalies all across space. What if they even found a way to leave the Milky Way galaxy with that strange technology that they had access to? And we just don't know that they were able to do this. What if they even made it to Andromeda? What if the Geth, who are definitely returning, help share their findings as a way to become accepted into the Citadel races hmm. and use it as a way of earning trust? Hmm. The Geth we've seen don't look like anyone is afraid of them. They look like they're peacefully existing. Kala, my girl, you gotta get a better resolution image of that. Don't you have that? <laughs> that is pixelated as all. <laughs> uh, I think I have it on my PC. I could probably send it to you. <laughs> you need a better one. This tells me a piece of some kind has been established with the Geth, or at least with this one. The Angara looks to be pointing at the Geth, but everyone else is pretty unaffected. Oh, this is Mac zoomed in Photoshop. It's as clear as I got. Damn, really? For real? You got to update your Photoshop. Because <laughs> I get a much clearer image than that one, I think. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong on that. I don't know. I think I do. <laughs> Let me check in uh, after the video. So while this aspect is confusing, Huh. The Geth is still largely unbothered uh, maybe and you can't. unnoticed. And what if this Geth here no next way. <laughs> to this possible Ezo-filled crater died trying to help, died trying to discover something, or died trying to share their findings? It wouldn't make sense for them to be the antagonist again. No, I just true. don't see that being the case in Mass Effect 5. I think, if anything, we will be helping them become established as a recognized race. Yes, and I don't want the Geth to be villains again. I don't want to shoot another Geth. I'm so sick of fighting the Geth. I just want him on my side. I just want Geth buddies, you know, because Geth are really interesting as a standalone race. Uh, Legion, best boy ever, for sure. Uh, top list, like he's like second or third place of my favorite AIs. ED, of course, unfortunately tops him. Sounds really wrong, but it's true. She's there, and Legion is just below, but I, I love him. I love the Geth. And I can see all of these possibilities leaning into a more sympathetic view of the Geth to the other races. 
and I for sure think the Geth and their telescope will be involved in the next game, especially because Geth the Harem. Skipper ship is labeled XT-8, which is actually the name of a popular telescope. And the organization of the letters XT-8 Damn. uses the Andromeda naming convention. The Nomad was the ND-1. So hinting at a telescope and using Andromeda naming convention could mean that this specific piece of concept art was hinting at the Andromeda telescope. But uh, Normandy was SR1, so it's still sort of the same naming convention. If I understand you correctly, or maybe I'm misunderstanding. AKA the Geth telescope, Jeez. AKA the Kalos array. You guys. And yes, I do need to go out and touch grass. I'm very aware of this, but like Dark Energy, Element Zero, and the Scourge, the telescope could potentially involve travel. Touch grass? Why? Who does that? Who, who would ever touch grass? For what reason? <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, it had the dash. Oh, so it's miss missing the dash. True. And maybe this technology is eventually used to create real-time intergalactic travel, the same way it works with observing the galaxy in almost real time. And the Geth's connection to AI is very important, as it relates to everything we know in Andromeda as well. The Jardan may have been pure or partial synthetics, and we do find ancient AI on Vold. We also know that Ryder is special. Ancient aliens, ancient alien AI. Special because of their connection with Sam, and all that brings me to why I think the Geth yes, will be what important is moving forward. In the games, Legion and Edie are really the only synthetics that we build important relationships with, and Mass Effect Three is the only game in the trilogy where that's explored on a deeper level. Rarely gets it. It makes sense for Mass Effect 5 to continue explorations of synthetic versus organics in a way that continues to humanize the synthetics without making them the enemy again. It would make sense story-wise, and I think it would also just be heavily enjoyed by the fandom. While the Koreans are more sided with amongst the fandom because of Tally, the actual statistics show that more people side with the Geth than the Koreans when it comes to the final choice on Why didn't I think of this? But it kind of makes sense. Sided with the Geth, yes, because yes, like obviously 80%, yes, most people achieve the perfect result, of course, because they want the perfect result. Sided with the Geth, sided with the Koreans, 11 to 9. Still a pretty big difference. That's an overall like 30% difference between both of them, sort of, I think, unless my math is off, like 25%. So yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, but obviously, like the Quarians are assholes. So I mean, not every Quarian, of course, but like they're so warmongery, you know, they're, it, it was them that decided to turn on the Geth. Then, you know, maybe the Geth's response wasn't that reasonable, considering they almost wiped out the entire creator species. But, hey, you throw the first punch, I'm going to finish it, just like the Geth did. Best, best boy, best, uh, best, best race. Uh, Want to see Dune? Maybe. Rannoch, which is a pretty interesting statistic. Additionally, looking at this poster again, Maybe this could have been what the Geth were observing. An element zero rich planet. Maybe they were going to use the element zero to leave the galaxy. Or maybe there is a buried relay within this planet. And the Geth were planning on extracting it. Maybe they encountered an enemy race protecting it. Or there was some kind of battle here. Maybe the Geth were already here when something crashed on top of them. As we don't see a ship or ship debris directly in the crater. I'm not sure, but... Uh, why are we talking about Geth? We killed them all. Well, 
even if you like here's the thing right we we have seen that they uh they do return in the next game because we've seen this crater and we've seen the geth and the new poster that's standing beside what seems to be liara so they are definitely making a return and we also hear them in the transmission thing uh that released in 2022 so they are definitely coming back so we did not destroy them all evidently this poster seems to connect this planet with this ezo filled crater and this is all connected to the geth and this squad that it looks like it has rex here is possibly exploring whatever Tessarina, previously thank you. happened i'll check that out or maybe this is old and it's from the morning war or the crucible explosion and we're seeing the aftermath of the endings the geth that's don't possible look like they had weapons or reinforcement so who knows what they were up to here Again, Kala, I'm going to send you this. I'm going to encircle and try to fix so you can see with the contrast because it's really hard to see. But there are two Quarians, at least one. But I think, I, you know, it's definitely two Quarians. And since there's a Geth there, I go by the assumption that there was a settlement here or that there was a group of Quarians and Geth together for some reason. Maybe they were fighting. I don't know. But I assume that since they have all died uh they were probably hit by an enemy and they were not fighting so i'm gonna assume that but whatever they were doing it got them killed yes. so yes bringing back the geth humanizing them and advancing them as a recognizable citadel race makes sense and i think their telescope and whatever knowledge they had and whatever they've been studying and observing could all be connected to that Maybe they replicated this technology and helped build a new relay or help build this new relay type looking construct. Could this relay be being built with newfound technology that makes instant travel possible, even across galaxies? Could this relay here be founded on new tech or strange tech? Maybe this is another way that the Geth contributed to the greater galaxy. Maybe they're behind the building of this. That one's a stretch, especially with the Cerberus colors. But maybe Liara is speaking to a Geth about it. Maybe hmm. the Geth even helped unlock relays that were previously inaccessible. Or found brand new relays. Or were able to find new technology because of their telescope. Their telescopes really open up a million possibilities. Hey, Carol. They could have easily discovered what was happening in Andromeda following the years after the initiative left. And while the Scourge isn't detonated until 2450, maybe the Geth saw the warring between the Jardan and whoever they were in conflict with within the years before the detonation on Ketasira. That kind of telescope being able to observe the galaxy in almost hey real time would have given the Geth access to an unbelievable amount of information, especially within the Milky Way galaxy itself. And we still don't know what they were actively looking for or at. There's a ton of story possibilities here surrounding the Geth and their telescope and the Milky Way and even Andromeda. And that brings me again to the Scourge. We know that Andromeda is being included in this game. It's undeniable. While it may not have a huge connection, I think there's a few obvious ways to connect the games and that can make it feel more cohesive. And that starts with connecting the Scourge to dark energy. Like I said earlier, what if Dolan does go supernova and eventually becomes a black hole and we see hmm. another Scourge-like event? What if this affects the element zero within the galaxy? Cool. What if the Scourge was artificially created and the Geth were observing its creation or the race that created it? You, I, you're on to something. I swear, it sounds like you're on to something. So essentially, let me break it down for anybody who doesn't understand or doesn't follow. Essentially, the Scourge in Andromeda is a sort of, uh, uh, it's a not a man-made weapon, but it's a synthetic thing that exists and is destroying technology and planets and all that good stuff. Not good stuff, but, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> and if they decide, goddamn, like cat hairs in my face, uh, if they decide to continue with this sort of plot thread, they could tie it back to the uh, the Haystrom thing where Tally finds an unstable star, or, well, she is not 
but she doesn't find it. She, uh, she, she studies it, right? And tries to see what the problem is with the star itself because it's accelerated, right? So let's assume that this star is going supernova and it's somebody who actually like triggers it and this turns into the scourge somehow because then we could tie it together and then we have somebody who's like actually doing this from behind the scenes but who could that ever be right because it happens in two different galaxies either that or it's a natural phenomena that happens when dark energy becomes too unstable and maybe the scourge is just accelerated unstable dark energy get it What if the Scourge we encounter in Andromeda isn't the first detonation of the Scourge, and it was also in the Milky Way galaxy? True. There's still so much unexplored in the Milky Way galaxy, and while there's a ton of mysteries in the small area that we have explored, there's a million more mysteries outside of the Council space and places that Shepard visited. Billions. The team could easily make the Scourge be something that was discovered in the timeline after the events of Mass Effect 3. And because of the time jump, could make it so that it originated in the Milky Way galaxy and then was detonated two or 300 years later in Andromeda. Damn, so we're bringing our problems to Andromeda. That could be a cool idea. I love it. Uh, Porta with the five bucks. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, has the new Mass Effect board game been discussed on the stream yet? No. Somebody uh, told me about it earlier, but no, I haven't really looked into it. I have to check it out. I've been kind of out of the loop for a while. Dark energy, dying stars, and the scourge seem to be the most simple elements to focus on. Even if Andromeda isn't heavily included in Mass Effect 5, including story elements that could help explain what does happen in Andromeda, I think would make a lot of Andromeda fans happy, while also just expanding on the universe, especially since I don't think we'll be getting a true Andromeda sequel. Establishing connections to Ryder's story while not being able to actively go there would help resolve some of the lingering questions left in Andromeda. And there's been some speculation about this specific concept art piece and its similarities to the beam from Mass Effect 3. If this True. could be related to new travel technology or dark energy, or maybe that blue tint is from Element Zero. Uh, I'm, I was more, um, I instantly thought of the, the remnant technology, really, you know, that big blue beam and the big generators when you go into the vaults and you turn them off. I was more like thinking along those lines, but yeah, like, yeah, like most likely this is some form of that, you know, that instant transportation. I'm thinking that this is some sort of like maybe like a tunneling network, instead of taking a bus, you just zoop, you know, instead of taking a ship or like a cab, you just go straight up into like a platform or a ship or something through these things. That could be cool. Like big elevators, instant elevators. If element zero was being used here, it could lower an individual's mass and transport them directly to a planet or some other location, which was actually related to an unused concept by Matt Rhodes. After Mass Effect 3's ending, he speculated that after synthesis, all the races would link to the nearest relay because of their new synthetic connection. Oh yeah, okay. And they'd be able to jump to <laughs> any world that they chose, surface to surface. Yeah. This effect would start changing their biology and the biology of every being. And they would essentially merge far, far into the future into a similar race. That's so overpowered. This was his speculation and was never expanded upon but if these are similar to the beams from Mass Effect 3, this could mean that this element of travel has been realized. And it would mean that direct travel is now possible. And we don't really know exactly how these beams worked anyways, since they were created by the Reapers. But expanding on the ending choice in Mass Effect 3, maybe this technology became accessible. Or maybe this technology was already being used by the Geth and their strange technology. And part of what's so interesting is it looks like cars are headed directly towards the bottom of this beam. Hmm. So maybe this is a transport hub 
And these sky cars yes. are traveling between worlds. And this there is some kind go. of actual transport beam that can transfer sky cars and you don't need a faster than light ship. That's so cool if we actually get to see something like that and we see like cars go into the beam and they go whoop, you know, and we're just, you know, loitering. I mean, not loitering, but walking around the city, just doing stuff, exploring. And then we see like, you know, static stuff like that or just random stuff like that happen in the background. Wouldn't that be amazing? This could be an interesting way to utilize Reaper tech in the future while also advancing the Milky Way races. And from the 2022 teaser clip of the relay, we see some kind of anomaly across the screen. They seem to shimmer and slither across the video. Either this is some kind of intentional distortion to hide something on the feed, or this could be a ship or something being cloaked by new technology. Uh, my theory here is that the whole, uh, you know, corrupted the thing that happens there, the transmission thing, that is on, on, only because of the translation uh, or the de-encryption of the audio. I think that's probably it because it happens at the same time. Now, it could be something else. It could be like a, like a cloak or something activating something like that's maybe related to the ship, maybe it's uh, like activating its stealth uh, functions or something and that's what causes it but then it would it would disappear from the footage which it kind of does but i wonder if it's just because of the distance you know it flies away or if it's just because the ship is getting cloaked on camera and this could be the introduction of a new race and maybe that's why we're seeing the 314 t's or this is that a new cool. use of dark energy which we know that Object Row utilized dark energy as a sort of force field and barrier. Maybe dark energy is being utilized here as well. This one is a bit of a stretch, but this distortion isn't really talked about a lot. True. And I think that's essentially because there's just so many possibilities here. It could be new tech, a new race, or tech that was around and was being hidden. It could be related to AI or the Jardin or the Geth. But these anomalies will probably end up being important later on. Additionally, with dark energy, the Scourge, Black Holes, Element Zero, the Geth, and the Geth Telescope, they're all involved in different aspects of time-related events. So I wonder if the message from last year's N7 Day could be related to all of the time travel possibilities, especially since it says post-Nebula and a nebula is a giant cloud of dust and gas in space. Some nebula come from the gas and dust thrown out by the explosion of a dying star, such as a supernova. The date says 2819, which we know is from Ryder's timeline. And it says that this message was encrypted. And we know that the message ends up being Liara, saying although they should know by now not to underestimate human defiance, how is Liara connected to Andromeda here? Could all of these time travel possibilities have opened up a wormhole for communication? Could the, I'll agree with you on this. The, the part about the nebula is very interesting. I don't like, I can't re remember any reference to nebula specifically as a thing, like a code word or something in Mass Effect. So it's interesting that they chose that as like the final scene and the reveal of the character. Uh, like the, it's basically like the most important clip or part of the clip and it's called post nebula. So after a nebula is created, so you would immediately think, okay, is this like after a star explodes? Very interesting. Could Liara's message have been sent to 2819, setting up a future return if the next game doesn't take place in Andromeda's timeline? Or maybe this audio was sent from Andromeda, since it does say Andromeda distress signal detected. Year sent 2819. Maybe with all the possible time space anomalies, this message is from the past. Or maybe Liara really is in 2819 and sent this message. But hmm. what's interesting about this is that when Gamble originally shared this quote, it was in the audio from the relay clip where it sounds like Liara is either speaking to a Geth or a Geth is speaking while listening to Liara. So there's some kind of connection to the audio, the relay, the Geth, 
and Liara, while also all connecting to Andromeda. I think it's obvious that um, the Geth that we hear in the audio is speaking directly to Liara. I think they're having a conversation and she can understand it. Because we see that there is a Geth standing beside an Asari who looks very important, who is also conversing with the only uh, Angara in the entire bar. So I think that that is the same Geth talking to Liara there. I think that's that's how they're connected. It makes sense, really. Right. And I also think that this piece of concept art could be connected as well. There was a security breach, and the warning tells us to contact Systems Alliance. The first access codes are accepted, and then we see the warning. So was this Liara hacking the system? Was the Geth hacking the system? Was the N7 hacking the system? Would the N7 even need to if they were an N7? Wouldn't an N7 have access to Systems Alliance information? And additionally, the concept art that Gamble shared for N7 Day had this Liara quote, but the image looks like it's from a location from the original trilogy, not somewhere in Andromeda. We don't know of anywhere in Andromeda that had advanced to this level. If this Andromeda message was sent in 2819, did this message end up in some kind of wormhole being sent to the past? This piece of information is very hard to put together because it being sent from Andromeda doesn't necessarily make sense with what we know. So there's a ton of questions here. And this being Liara in 2819, sending a message back to the Milky Way, maybe that is what is going on. But all the time and travel possibilities could be related to this quote, the concept art and the relay that we hear the Geth and Liara speaking over. And with a direct Andromeda sequel most likely out of the question, I think, I could see a ways to pull in Andromeda like this, or even setting up a future visit to the Andromeda timeline. And I think the Jardan could be the main key to the next game because of this reason. Aside from the Dark Energy and the Scourge, they are the perfect tie-in between the two timelines and stories. And I'll explore that next time. But there's one more connection that I want to see return in some form. And so, that's Shepard's biggest fan. Right, here we go. <laughs> Conrad Werner. So when it comes to the Jardan, right, they're like the only remaining mystery, really. The Jardan and their conflict that I think people are invested in. I think if anything, people who are big fans of Andromeda want to know more about what happened to them and what they were, because they're essentially like the Reaper mystery, like that we had in the trilogy, but in Andromeda, right? They're supposed to be this ancient race or like a, the Protheans, right? Uh, they just suddenly disappeared and they had this big war going on or conflict with someone who we don't even know like what who they were fighting. So it's like this big unanswered questions, but we know that it's connected to something with dark energy, which makes it like an obvious sort of tie-in to bring in because that's the thing that people are wondering about a lot. Yes, there are fans for Andromeda. And you're probably wondering what Conrad Werner has to do with dark energy and Mass Effect 5. But while Conrad Werner is probably Mass Effect's biggest meme, and he has been a running joke for several years, you might not be familiar with his secret. He's actually a genius and may very well be the key to Mass Effect 5's plot. <laughs> so let's go over. Did you? Did you actually? No, you probably didn't. But I'm assume I'm gonna assume that you did. I hope you watched my my old Conrad Werner dark energy theory thing or time travel video. <laughs> that was also one video that I remember I'd made. Oh my god, it's so silly. But it's I mean, it kind of it's pretty cool because he has this dissertation on like something regarding dark energy or time dilation. <laughs> and it's something that you could actually sort of use in a way or it could like tease us in what might happen in the future. For Conrad's connection to dark energy, 
and how Conrad Werner helped build the Dark Energy Crucible. First, let's talk about Conrad Werner. In Mass Effect 3, Conrad actually writes a dissertation about Dark Energy and gives it to Shepard, which counts as a war asset. The Codex entry in the game says published years ago by Dr. Conrad Werner, this doctoral dissertation on xenotechnology is a lengthy but intriguing argument that dark energy causes a minute but empirically observable difference in the passage of time. Hotly debated when first published, the paper's theory is supported by recent data. The dissertation illuminates several instructions left by the Protheans on how to build the crucible. The interesting thing here is it ties together with time dilation right away, uh, but it, it's interesting because we know for a fact that uh, element zero, as I mentioned before, removes time dilation, but it seems like it doesn't completely remove it. So I wonder if that is something you can manipulate somehow to like not remove time dilation completely. Uh, I don't know, I just find it really interesting. So essentially, Conrad wrote an entire dissertation about how dark energy causes a small but observable passage of time. And he was ahead of the times with his knowledge. And we know that dark energy was important in Mass Effect 2, but has connections throughout the entire universe and both the original trilogy and Andromeda, while also being rooted in real science. And it seems like at the time of Conrad's dissertation being published, it was very debated and unsupported, but new data changed, and it is now supported by recent data, which means more scientists were beginning to also research dark energy and its connection to the passage of time and agreed with Conrad. And while Conrad Werner might be an annoying superfan who the hero romanticizes we need. Yes. the Spectre program to the point that he becomes an insufferable idiot and goes so far as to steal an N7 armor set to impersonate Shepard, he's actually a good dude. Well, if you do the Paragon route with him anyways. In Mass Effect 2, he even starts a charity for refugees and orphans called Shepherds. He tells Shepard in Mass Effect 3 that he spent almost all of his money getting the children off world to save them from Reaper attacks. What a guy. So while he may be an idiot, he also has a big heart. In his quest to both help the galaxy and help Shepard, he even stupidly joined Cerberus due to Shepard's affiliation. After being set straight by Shepard on the Citadel, he agrees to help and reveals that he has a doctoral degree in Xenoscience. Like this guy is just chaos personified. How can you be simultaneously a genius, but also fucking idiotic like this at the same time, but then also be a really good dude? <laughs> It's so weird. He's he's such a personality. That's why people love him. And then he sends Shepard a copy of his dissertation on dark energy. He also goes so far as to help you with ancient tech schematics to help with the crucible. He contacts Gavin Hossel from Zoo's Hope in Mass Effect 1, who sends the schematics over per Conrad's request. If you also obtain the 10 Matriarch Dilanaga's writings, from Mass Effect 1 and the Elkos Combined Armory License, those Chaotic combined guy, with Conrad's yes. dissertation will be able to translate the schematics. It's a lot of work from Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 to get all of this unlocked, but once you do, you're able to use his schematics and dark energy knowledge and help with the Crucible. And for all the reasons I just spoke of, I do think Conrad's dissertation could end up becoming important even if he isn't around. Maybe they're using that as like a small explanation at the start of the game, like uh, sort of like a, a bit like in the first hour where they go like, yeah, because of like, maybe it's a news report playing or something. And they explain that since Conrad Werner's dissertation on dark energy, you know, la la la. <laughs> and they've been able to sort of open up the discussion and then they would were able to, to, you know, 
use that practice <laughs> somehow and evolve it. That would be cool. I'd love to hear something like that and that his dissertation is actually what opened up the entire idea to them. Like, like you know, the race is es essentially evolving. Dark energy could be one of the most logical ways to connect the two games, while also no bringing joke. back a thread that fans want continued. So yes, I hope we see Conrad return for the memes and for the chance that his dissertation might be an important piece of lore for the next game. Yeah. But it's also important to remember that there are many pieces to even get this outcome. You have to paragon Conrad for all three games. You have to find all 10 matriarch writings. You have to help Gavin Hossel, and you have to have helped Jenna in Mass Effect 1, <laughs> or Conrad is shot dead by the Cerberus agent in Mass Effect 3. That guy's death stare. <laughs> Conrad oh can God. die in every game. If you're interested in seeing every choice and outcome, check out Big Dan's video that I put <laughs> below. And I do also wonder if he and Jenna finally got together and he actually has a real wife. Obviously, he'd only be able to return in the next game if it takes place close to Mass Effect 3, or if he is put in some kind of cryo sleep, which I would find very unlikely, but his sister did go into cryo to make it to Andromeda, so who knows? And a fun fact about Conrad Werner is that there is a theme park attraction called Mass Effect New Earth. And in the attraction, Conrad is actually the captain of the ship. And he's what? I had no idea. So I know there, like I knew there was an attraction, but okay, that's new to me. Taking the riders to Terra Nova. The ride has been around for several years. So at this point, Conrad has actually been around longer than Shepard. <laughs> and I also just want to say that all of this is pure speculation. And I know how crazy with how much I've thought about all this that I sound. Please entertain my delusions. But at the same time, this is all just speculation. I 100% understand that everything that we're looking at is just clues and hints. Dude, that's pretty well animated because I, I'll assume that this attraction was made a, a, a fair bit of years ago, but that looked good. I, I would like to experience this. Could be and cool. that things may change during development. So while speculating and theorizing is fun, it is just speculation and it is just theory crafting. And realistically, Mass Effect 5 is not coming out for a while. So we have a lot to theorize and a lot of time. But now that I've gone over my theories, I want to go over some theories that I asked for on Twitter. I saw this Ooh. interesting theory about the Geth contacting Meridian, and that opened up some additional thoughts. The Geth telescope could observe the Helios cluster in almost real time. I really think Geth found a way to con contact Meridian somehow, like by accident, and was before Ryder and them get to Andromeda, and then when they get there and activate it, the Geth get a, like some weird sci-fi space bending signal that alarms them because they thought it was gone oh so they see that oh so that's how they find out that they're in trouble sort of i see but specifically in the time frame before the initiative left and at that time Makes it sense. was free of the scourge and the cluster itself was thriving but it would have also meant that the remnant technology also wasn't around the angara were created centuries ago long before the Scourge and long before the Initiative finds them. Could the Geth have made observations of the Angara or even made contact with them? Could their synthetic origins allow them to transfer their unit to different platforms across galaxies and then even rebuild their own bodies elsewhere? That is a super stretch, but it sounds kind of plausible. The Geth were barely explored and I bet their technology on top of whatever strange technology they had, would have opened up a ton of possibilities. And I wouldn't be surprised if they knew about other races and had far more knowledge of the entire universe than anyone else. They probably did. I've also seen a lot of theories using dark energy to create a time travel situation in which Shepard is pulled in from a different spot on the timeline. <laughs> and I don't think- I've talked about that before as well. That is such a stretch. 
Like, it's a fun thing to like, oh, wouldn't it be fun to know? Well, you know, <laughs> that's, you know, no. <laughs> like, I see what people try to do when they talk about this idea, but no, it's no. You just don't pull Shepard like you pull Captain America from another timeline or something like that. Oh, whoops. Now he's here, or, you know, Spider-Man movies, right? <laughs> Pull him from another alternate reality. No, 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 no. Situations like this are possible unless they re-establish what already happened with a time travel loop, meaning essentially everything that happened was meant to happen. And what happened in the past was reinforced by something that happened in the future. So I don't see this really changing Shepard's outcome in a way that would make sense. And I've also seen the theory that the Milky Way Galaxy and Andromeda Galaxy's timelines could essentially coexist. And I think what I just said about the time travel loop applies to this as well. This concept cannot exist if it changes the timelines that have already been completed. I just have no idea what this could do to the timeline. So I don't- Create a lot of plot holes and make the story really nonsensical. <laughs> That is how it's going to turn out, essentially. I don't think, like, there is really any, uh, like, any way you could really, you know, expect that to go down. It's just going to ruin it because it's going to make everything make no sense. And uh, so I don't think that the writers are going to introduce it because I, I think they know that it will. I don't know how this could even be possible. Nor Nice shot, bro. <laughs> oh, boy. Or do I think development-wise that this is even feasible? They'd have to build two entire games, two protagonists and both sets of companions. God, she's cute. Two ships, all the additional worlds. That sounds like an unreasonable amount of development resources. So I just don't think that this is happening. I've also seen time travel theories related to the lost Korean Ark. And since the Korean Ark is possibly Ark 6, maybe even the Korean Ark was lost in a wormhole those NPCs, or got sucked man. into time travel or something else along those lines where it moved along the timeline. I don't really see that happening, but the last confirmed message from the Kilosea was in 2753. And nothing else is known after that. So again, this is another concept that could be explored, but if it's near the timeline of Mass Effect 3, time travel or wormholes would have to be used to connect the arc. I've also seen a lot of theories about possible time dilation, which could be possible with all the dark energy, element zero, and space-time issues between dark energy and that the could scourge. Happen, yes. But I do think if they do this, it would maybe feel a bit too similar to Exodus, which is heavily focusing on that's okay that's not a problem i mean if anything i'm fine with it because if exodus does it they could do it too i mean mass effect already has like dark energy and magic and space magic and stuff like that so i mean why not it, it like the fact that exodus is doing it and they can like popular popularize the idea even more i mean they even have fucking matthew McGonaghy. Uh, and the cast who also starred in the time dilation movie i just think it makes sense kind of i don't think it's like i don't think they have to be particularly unique by not doing it i think uh, since they are doing it since exodus has done it since interstellar has done it why not i mean if it works it works on time dilation matthew mcgonaghy i don't know matthew mcgonaghy I don't know how to say his last name. I think it's McGonaghy. <laughs> ...as their main core concept. So maybe... But McGonaghy? Again, I still don't really know how I feel about time travel, wormholes, or time dilation in Mass Effect. And finally, the last concept I want to cover is that the two galaxies will collide in the future. And I don't think this is happening. Oh, sorry. Ready for something really unhinged? In real life, the Milky Way and Andromeda uh, are on an inevitable collision course, which is something that Michael Gamble actually tweeted or like responded to when somebody had posted like two galaxies colliding. And he was like, hmm. So 
you know, he was obviously teasing something there. Uh, what if dark energy and time dilation somehow speeds up that collision course in the stories of the original trilogy and MEA literally collide? Yeah, well, no. I mean, it's a fun thought to experiment with. Oh, so you're talking, so he's saying here that the stars are literally going to smash into each other and the time is going to be like that. It's going to be the same timeline and everything is just going to mash like a big Doctor Strange scenario. <laughs> Nah. Nah. Because this isn't speculated to happen for five more billion years. There would have to be an insane amount of activity to cause something this major to happen and speed up the process that much. And I think there would also be a lot of casualties in both galaxies if this happened. Oh, ho, ho, ho. and with both galaxies, you have no idea. <laughs> you would annihilate basically all life in the galaxy almost. Maybe not all life, but. Yeah, that's trillions or quadrillions of lives lost. Galaxies having black holes, scientists have little knowledge of what would actually happen. But aside from the several impacts and reorganizing of planets, they suspect the solar system would be largely unharmed, but the night sky would be drastically altered. And then yes, if that was to happen as, at the speed that it does right now. But as soon as you approach those type of relativistic hyperspeeds, no, the galaxies are fucked. <laughs> Milky Way galaxy is already thought to have consumed more than a dozen galaxies. Zoltan, galaxies colliding is not the same as stars colliding. No, no, no. I'm talking about the speeds that this would, like for this to happen, both galaxies would have to collide at immense speeds for this to even be a thing. Even if it likes, if, even if it's like relatively slowly, it's still like, no, I like you would throw gravity so much out of balance. There would, there would definitely be stars colliding. It would be like a big firework show, but on a galactic scale. Now, again, that like I'm speaking in relativistic terms, right? <laughs> But everything is moving the same speed. It's essentially the same as real life speed. Mm. Uh, but anything, uh, nothing would really hit anything else because space is so empty. I don't know. We can only hi hi hypothesize. I'm I'm sure that there would probably be stars colliding, even if like yes, they are big space clouds. But since there are like trillions of stars here colliding with each other there's like obviously a chance that dust particles are going to collide of course then again you know the space between stars and the space between is obviously larger actually than like a dust cloud between the dust like the the specks of dust itself but still still though still though billions of years so while the milky way is always changing, sorry uh, really, the gravity is really what you're needing to worry about. Yes, exactly. Really, at the end of the day, it's 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 the gravity, right? Because if that happens at, at those speeds, like it takes oh, 500 years for them to collide. Whew. Like this is like billions of years that this is going to happen. But like 500 years, Jesus, those are some insane speed. That's far faster than the speed of light. So... Yeah, the gravity would be all over the place. I don't see this happening. Uh, Pierre, you would get so many Gs, everything would turn into dust. Essentially, yes. Mass Effect. Both universes are distinct and carry their own stories. And I just don't see a reason to combine them. They each have unique distinctions and histories. And I think it removes some of the mystery of the galaxy if you just combine them. It also removes a bit of what makes Mass Effect so special, and that to an extent, Mass Effect reflects a futuristic scenario of our real world. Yeah, you don't really, like the whole thing with placing it in Andromeda, like the story, it wasn't really necessary, in my opinion. I mean, the Milky Way galaxy is so absurdly big that most people can't even imagine how big like i can't fathom the size of the milky way galaxy look at this look at this look at this <laughs> it's like and we're not even seeing all the stars because 
<laughs> between all the like black spaces, there are literally this many stars between every black splotch on this screen. It's almost like endless, really. It, it isn't, but in real terms, it really is. Like, <laughs> our galaxy could be the universe in of itself. That's how big it is. So ultimately, I hope they don't go that route, nor do I think they will. So here are all my dark energy theories and a few from some of you. And there's also still a lot to explore about the dark energy and scourge potentials that have more connections to the Jardan and their history. And I'll go more into that into my deep dive into my Jardan video. Milk Dramada. But what do you think about all these theories? Which one stands out to you the most? And which ones would you like to see in Mass Effect 5? And do you have any theories that I didn't cover? And if you're still here, just know that I am not going anywhere. There was quite a bit of negativity about Mass Effect 5 still being in pre-production, which oh, honestly she says shouldn't it. have surprised anyone since we knew this back in August. Yes. But regardless, I'm here for the long haul. I have several more Mass Effect videos in the works, and while we wait for Mass Effect 5 to come out, I'll still be covering other games. Yeah, look, so I get that you guys are worried. I am worried as well at times. But knowing what I know about the franchise, this is like the top dog. This is one of their golden goose. It's either this or Dragon Age or both. They're not going to let Mass Effect slip, guys. So they're going to give this at least one more shot with the next game. And then depending on what happens, we'll see, you know, of course. But... We don't need all this negativity surrounding Mass Effect, okay? We're like, let's face it, most of us are super excited. Even if you aren't very excited because you're worried, you're still excited. Stop lying. Uh, <laughs> sure, we all have our reservations about products that we want to be good. And seeing how the gaming industry has been just in a complete shit show recently, there are still glimmers of hope. There is Larian Studios, for example. There is a resurgence in single-player games, even if EA has had a history of... That's pretty shitty, to be honest. But since they've started to focus a lot more on single-player stuff and, like, trying to remove the live act, like live service stuff, I think that's not... Well, maybe not commendable, but it's a good thing, right? It's a brighter future. Yes, there are tons of layoffs. It's happening all across the industry, and it's not specifically for Bioware and EA. Like, comparatively, like, the amount of people that was laid off from Bioware was, like, 50 people. It's comparatively small. Now, I'm not saying that it doesn't suck, because it absolutely fucking does, and I wish those people still had their jobs, but, like, there's tens of thousands of people that have been laid off ever since last year, uh, closing in on 20, I think. And we don't even, like, only have Larian. We have studios like our Swedish studio right here, you know, who just made uh, Helldivers 2 Arrowhead Game Studios. Also a great game focused on making a fun game, uh, focused on the players and, you know, producing content for the players. So, you know, it's it's looking on the up and up, honestly, for at least single-player games. So I don't think we need to worry too much. Look at the, the, the cast, the roster of people returning or working on this next game. It's looking pretty positive, guys. I'm, it, I'm not trying to say that just to make you guys happy. It honestly looks really good situationally. So let's just calm down, okay? <laughs> such as Exodus and Humanoid Origins upcoming IP. And thank you so much for watching my videos. I'm actually going to be doing Damn. a giveaway of some of the Mass Effect stickers I've designed. Just You're like generous as all hell. Yes, look at those stickers. Wonderful. Damn, give me that uh, Aria one. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get that one. They all look really good. Um. I wish I could do more giveaways, honestly. Honestly, I don't know what I would give away because I don't have any real skills. Uh, the only thing that I can really give away are like Swedish chocolates, <laughs> which I've done like once or twice. Leave a comment with the word stickers in it to enter. And if you want to learn more about the Geth Telescope, here is a video breaking down everything that we know, as well as a theory about dying stars and dark energy. Dang. Check these out and let me know what you think. And a special thank you to my channel members. Thank you for all your support and see you next time.
Nice. That was a chonker. That was an absolute chonker of a video. Uh, remember to check out the video again, guys. I'm gonna remind you again. It's very important uh, that we support each other like this. Um, I don't think I'll have the time to check out Dan's video as well. I really want to check out that. So I imported Mass Effect 3 with no important save. We'll probably check that out next time. That could be fun. Uh, it's fun just doing this, you know, reacting to other content creators. Uh, I don't want to do that like all the time because obviously it really takes, you know, doesn't take much effort to do it, but it's just fun, you know, to do. Mostly that that is really the only reason I want to do it because I want to have fun. Um, oh, Jesus. Sorry about that broken earth. All I remember about Arya is her attitude. Don't fuck with Arya. Yeah. Love her. Uh, so the problem with uh, stream elements, I got to say that just so you guys know, sometimes it like removes messages uh, automatically. I don't know why it still does, like why it removes uh, things like fuck and shit. Uh, but it still does for some reason. I have not blacklisted those words, so I don't know what's going on with it. But I kind of do need it for spam protection and stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, what do you guys think about dark energy? We got to ask this right here. Is this something you guys can see as a future... Maybe not a plot line, but a sort of ingredient, I guess, in the story to make it work. Do you even think like that a dark energy centered story really could work? Let's assume that they go back to Drew Karpishin's idea, or maybe not his idea, but his team's idea of making that like the prime motivation behind the Reapers. But now we don't have the Reapers, but what if they sort of return to it? It, Atom, I don't want dark energy time travel in next massive, massive game, but if even if it's only just dark energy, not time travel. Could be the MacGuffin for the first half. True. I like it because it guarantees Tally will be back. Uh true right yes because she is the one that brings it up originally in the game yes true true palpatine i can see it yes you can <laughs> think dark energies definitely is the key or at least going to play a large part but to what extent i'm not sure yeah it definitely is one of those things that could explain a lot of where the story is going or where it could go it has a lot of possibilities it's already spoiled, so it wouldn't be as interesting. But what if somebody is behind it? What if somebody is manipulating it? What if some someone is causing it? What if someone is accelerating it? Hmm? 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 I need to make a real effort to explain how it works. It's not enough to say things are happening. Blah, 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 dark energy. <laughs> I know, right? Word vomit. Uh, you sort of have to have a an easily explained thing that kind of just makes sense true yes uh, dark energy is a huge part of the m universe and it's a swiss army knife of space magic they can do anything with it good comparison chad swiss army knife yeah it essentially is because there are so many things you can go from it uh if the, the writing is good dark energy is fine nice catch up reldy how long do quarians live uh, 60, 70 years. I think they have a relatively low lifespan. Um, them as well as Salarians. But I, yeah, the Salarians have definitely have shorter. The dark energy as a consequence for biotics and the storyline from ME2 should still play a part for ME5. Yeah. Hopefully, if there is a villain who uses it, it's not going to be because I want to destroy everything. <laughs> Yeah, so the problem with that is if somebody manipulates dark energy and uses it to destroy, like, planets and ships and systems and factions and stuff, like, how would you motivate that somebody actually wants to do that? What would be the motivation for someone? 
to do that because they would have to be pretty powerful. Now, a lot of people have talked to me before about like dimensional beings. And I think that could be a way to introduce a new sort of villain where they're like, they have a reason for maybe like, I don't know, maybe they're harvesting Ezo or something else, but that there's like entities that are like hyper dimensional, but they can still engage with this real world. And that is essentially what happens. That could be cool, but they would really have to like humanize these hyper dimensional beings somewhat into actual people somehow. So you have a villain to fight. Uh, nope, it's overcomplicated and thus too vague in my opinion. Okay, Jin, I see, I see. Graham, uh, I'd be happy fighting the Reapers again. <laughs> you just want the Reapers back, man. You're indoctrinated. Slim, well, considering how they were already planning on doing something and then let it sit in the backseat, I'll have the perfect opportunity to use dark energy as a plot point. Nice. Um... Hero somehow Reapers returned. <laughs> uh, Krabbe, sure, as long as it's not too complex for casual fans and new fans to understand. Yeah, it's important that people have a reasonably simple time understanding what it all is about, right? Uh, I thought Quarians live as long as humans. They probably do, but I know at least that... Uh, I don't know where I got that idea th idea from. I just assumed because of their compromised immune systems that they couldn't live as long. Uh, we killed the Reapers. They were coming to our galaxy, but doesn't mean there aren't any other Reapers. True, like that one um, uh, concept by one of the Andromeda artists, you know, where he created a small storyboard of like a Reaper surviving, actually, or several Reapers surviving. Uh, but in the Andromeda galaxy. I thought what, that was pretty cool, but it's sort of like that one thing where it's like, oh yeah, somehow the Reapers returned. <laughs> uh, I could see Cerberus somehow being behind that stuff. You could, couldn't you, Palpatine? <laughs> Someone needs to make a video explaining how the biotic toothbrush works. I will leave that one to Kala. Far too much effort would have to go into that. Uh, I think they should expand on what's already there instead of introducing too much new stuff. I see, Sparag Mods. So you're thinking like um, regular stuff, like mortal things to, you know, deal with, like politics, uh, fighting, infighting, galactic civil war, that kind of stuff, conflicts. Uh, the new art for the board game and Garrus' synthesis coding on his body. Really? I gotta look that up. Modifius. Ooh. What you got here? What what do we got here? Oh ba boba. Oh look at this. The board game. <laughs> I like the red. Uh, damn. It, the year is 2186 on the remote world. Hagalaz, a research cruiser from the terrorist organization Cerberus, has crashed directly into the path of a deadly storm. With a little time before the storm hits, Shepard must lead their squad through the cruiser to uncover its sinister secrets and keep them out of the hands of the enemy. However, the ship holds more dangers than, its, than just its former crew. Mass Effect Priority Hagalaz, the board game, is a cooperative story-driven game for one to four players designed by Eric M. Lang and Calvin Wang Ze Lun. The card-driven AI system. Sorry, and evolving stories respond to your actions, with your early choices even influencing later missions, while the branching narrative ensures unique experiences with each playthrough. Hmm, how would that because AI can be pretty wonky. Not sure what they mean by that either. Prepare to gather Shepard's squad from a selection of teammates from the Mass Effect universe, cu customize their abilities, equipment, and powers, and get to the bottom of the mystery on Hagalaz. The art looks pretty good, though. What did you say about... Oh! I'm sorry. I'm gonna try to remove this. You guys see that? There is, like, on Garrus, I'm gonna move myself over, I don't know why my cursor isn't showing, but there is, like, some stuff here. 
Is that like synthesis stuff? Is that what you meant, Kala? Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. That ain't it. I see nothing. Hmm. Yeah, it's not really that green. I like, can't really zoom in either, so I can't see. But this could be interesting, for sure. I, I think I would be willing to try this out and see what it is all about. So I guess I'll have to sign up. UK row, US. Does UK row mean Europe? I'm gonna guess that that's it. Hagalas was the Shadowbroker's home base planet. Yes, it was. Priority Hagalas. Hmm. Is there anything more that you can learn about this thing? Uh, Mass Effect from Strategy Legend. Set during the events of Mass Effect 3. Oh! Okay. Okay. First released in... 2012, the multi-platform, da-da-da-da. Interesting. There isn't really much to learn about it yet. But it will be released sometime this year, later on. Question is when. Well, well, now I know about that thing. We'll definitely check it out. Uh, his downstairs armor. Okay, yeah, that was the thing as well. Right, that was the thing I was thinking about. Um. Yeah, it's probably not a synthesis thing. I hope it's not. <laughs> Is this board game canon? Probably not, right? I don't know. Uh, let's check. Well, this is uh, Mass Effect TM, so it has to be incorporated. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, electronic Arts, da 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 Trademarks. Ooh, Mophidius is an authorized uh, Electronic Arts licensee. Okay, yes, it it's official. It seems to be official. For sure. Jesus, bread loaf. Come on, dude. You dirty, dirty, dirty loaf. Okay, guys, I'm going to go now. Thank you for checking out the stream. And thank you for watching uh, uh, the uh, the stream. <laughs> Remember to check out Kala's video as well. I, you know, I threw her uh, threw a link in the chat. So remember to check that out. Like the video. Comment if you can. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but we're going to call it for today. I'm probably going to return on Wednesday. Check out maybe Dan's video. We'll see what we're what we want to do. You know, maybe leave me a suggestion what you guys want to do. <laughs> That'd be nice. Uh, and I'll start uh, making uh, Dragon's Dogma videos uh, very soon. I'm actually working on one right now, uh, really. So look forward to that as well. Guys, thank you for today and take care. I should go. 